Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over Lesson 1.06, Pure Substances. Matter is composed of elements, compounds, and mixtures of the two. Chemists classify matter as either pure substances or mixtures. Pure substances consist of only one element or only one compound. You will learn the differences between elements and compounds and how to represent them with chemical symbols and formulas. Goals for this lesson, distinguish between elements, compounds, and mixtures, define the term element and give examples, define the term compound and give some examples, use chemical symbols and formulas. So matter can either be mixtures or pure substances. Mixtures can be physically separated into pure substances. If a pure substance has one kind of atom, it's an element. And where do we find all the elements? On the periodic table. If a pure substance has more than one type of atom, then it's a compound. Can you think of an example of a compound? H2O or water would be a compound. So H2O, H for hydrogen, O for oxygen, chemically bonded together, it's a compound. And it can be separated into the elements oxygen and hydrogen. So again, you can go ahead and click on slide two to get your study guide. Matter is made of mixtures and pure substances. From 1848 to 1850, thousands of settlers and miners infiltrated the mountains of California after John Marshall discovered gold at Sutter's Mill. Many miners pan for gold. They, look, they took a small flat pan, scooped up a small portion of the streambed or riverbed, swirled it around, dumped the water, and looked for flakes of gold. If they found a shiny gold flake, they would pick it out and store it. This, they continued this process over countless hours to make a fortune. The miner's pan contained a mixture of water, sediment, sand, gold, and other things. A mixture is a physical blend of two or more pure substances. By contrast, a pure substance is matter that is uniform in its composition. So the substance is going to be the same throughout. So now you got to be careful here. The word substance itself is any form of matter. So it's a pure substance or a mixture. But if we have the word pure substance, then it's the same throughout. Pure substances can be separated from mixtures by physical means. In this case, the miner separated the gold from the mixture by its physical property of luster. So in other words, because it was bright and shiny, which makes it look shiny compared to the sediment. Pure gold. For purposes of this lesson, we will assume that gold flakes and gold nuggets are pure gold. In fact, most gold nuggets and flakes have tiny amounts of silver or other metals in them. The largest gold nugget ever found are Welcome Stranger, weighing over 65 kilograms, and Hand of Faith, weighing 27 kilograms. So if you want to know how many pounds that is, 65 times 2.2, so 143 pounds. Crazy, right? And 27 times 2.2. So about 60 pounds. Panning for gold. Panning for gold is a way to separate a pure substance such as gold from a mixture of sediments and water. And so then you can see in the pan that there's some gold, there's some water, there's some dirt, some sand at the bottom. All right, let's take a look at the notes. Again, I just copy and pasted from the link into a Word document. And so I kept the first paragraph, kept the goals, kept the keywords and pronunciation. I added pure substance. Pure substances are matter that is form, that is uniform in its composition. In other words, elements or compounds. Now remember that's different than a substance, which is any form of matter. In chemistry, usually referring to pure substance or mixture. Mixture is a physical blend. So physical blend, think of you picked them up and you put them inside the same bowl. So you have some noodles, you have some tomato sauce, you have some meat, you have spaghetti, right? So it's a mixture. You can physically pick it apart with your fingers. Or a mixture could be physically changed into its original substances other ways, but the first way to think about it is just you put it together in a bowl. Now, when we talked about pure substances, I said that's either an element or a compound. So an element is a chemical substance that contains only one kind of atom and that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. If you have an atom of gold, 
that's it. You cannot change that atom of gold into silver, into oxygen, without nuclear reactions, which we're going to talk about next semester. But for now, basically stick with elements cannot be broken down, and chemically they can't be broken down or physically. Compound now is a substance composed of two or more elements that are chemically bonded in a definite fixed ratio by mass. So in other words, we have H2O. And when they say that definite fixed ratio, that little two means something. Do you know what it means? It means there are two atoms of hydrogen for every one atom of oxygen. And so that's why it's H2O. And that's what we mean by that fixed ratio. All right. Pure substances are made of either pure compounds or pure elements. Consider breaking water into its parts. If you use a physical process such as freezing to separate it, you will end up with ice, which is still water. Likewise, if you boil it, you will get water vapor, which is still water. It's still H2O. However, if you pass an electric current through water, you will find that gas accumulates at each electrode or each end of your electrical circuit. One gas is hydrogen and the other is oxygen. So you can use electricity to break apart H2O, break apart water, and end up with hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Each of these gases cannot be separated further. So once you have hydrogen, that's it. It's an element, it's on the periodic table, that's it. Once you have oxygen, that's it. It's an element. Pure substances can be composed of either pure compounds or pure elements. A compound is a substance that contains two or more elements combined in a fixed proportion. An element is the simplest form of matter that has unique properties and is composed of only one type of element. And so let's add this on here. All elements are on the periodic table. Water cannot be separated by physical means such as melting, freezing, or boiling, so it's a pure substance. Elements contain only one type of atom. An element is composed of only one kind of atom. Elements can be solids, liquids, or gases. Many elements do not occur as pure substances on Earth, but rather occur as parts of compounds. For example, liquid mercury, composed only of mercury atoms, is a pure element, but it is very rare in nature. Mercury atoms are commonly found as part of a compound, the ore called cinnabar, or mer mercuric sulfide, HGS. And the reason that mercury is abbreviated HG instead of like M or ME is because some of the elements they've known about for thousands of years, and so they had names in other languages besides English, like either Latin or Greek, and so it has to do with the Latin or Greek word for mercury. And then S for sulfur. Oxygen gas, O2, has two atoms of oxygen. Ozone, O3, is also a gas but is made of three atoms of oxygen. Oxygen is vital to life and odorless, while ozone is toxic and has a pungent smell. Because both substances are composed only of oxygen atoms, they are both elements, not compounds. So if it's one capital letter, it's an element. If there's more than one capital letter, it's a compound another quick way to tell. Elements contain only one kind of atom and can be solids, liquids, or gases. So this is what silicon looks like. Chlorine is a yellow poisonous gas. Sulfur is yellow and smells like rotten eggs. Here's some liquid mercury. And we also have copper. And so I added to the notes that elements have only one capital letter. So for example, you can have hydrogen or helium, boron, or beryllium. So they can have more than one letter, but only one's capital. Compounds have two or more capital letters in their formula. Again, for an example, H2O. Compounds contain more than one type of atom. A compound is a substance that contains two or more elements combined in a fixed proportion. Another way to say this is that a compound has more than one kind of atom. Examples of compounds include the following. Water, H2O, as a solid, liquid, or gas, is made of two atoms of hydrogen, H, and one atom of oxygen, O. Sodium chloride, or table salt, is composed of one atom of sodium, Na, and one atom of chlorine, Cl. You should know this. 
you should know sodium chloride is NaCl, and you should know that the common name for that is table salt. Okay, so that is definitely something that we're going to be using in our online lab. We're going to be talking about it a lot. So you should know water is H2O, table salt is NaCl, or sodium chloride. Calcium carbonate, CaCO3, or chalk, is a compound of calcium, Ca, carbon, C, and oxygen. It is found in seashells. How many calciums are there? One. How many carbons? One. How many oxygens? Three. Ammonia, or NH3, is an active ingredient in window cleaners and fertilizers and is made of one nitrogen and three hydrogen atoms. Sucrose, C12H22O11, is a sugar, and it's a white solid naturally produced by plants and algae and is made of 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygen atoms. And yes, that's important that you know the subscript or the little letter tells how many of each type of atom there are in a compound. Separation procedures allow you to tell the difference between various types of matter. How can you tell whether a given material is a pure substance, mixture, compound, or element? You need to ask a series of questions, some of which may involve performing tests. The answers will guide you. Can the material be separated into parts by physical means? such as evaporating, freezing, or filtering. If it can, if you can separate it physically, then it's a mixture. Now, some mixtures are harder to separate than others, but if you can do it by a physical means, so not a chemical change, but a physical change, then it's a mixture. If you cannot separate it by a physical change, then it's a pure substance. Can you separate it chemically, like when we put the electricity through the water? If you can, then it's a compound. If you cannot, then it's an element. So I'm going to add this little diagram to our notes. And the way that I'm able to add just part of my, what's on my screen is called the snipping tool. And so you probably have it on your computer. Um, do a search, like hit the little Windows button, and then check there and see if you can find snipping tool. If not, we'll try and find something online because it's super helpful to be able to copy and paste the little pictures into your notes. Cinnamon flavored sugar can be separated into its components. How could you separate a cinnamon sugar mixture? Physical separation number one. To separate out the cinnamon, dissolve the whole mixture in water and filter it. You will end up with cinnamon on the filter paper and a solution of sugar and water that will pass through the filter. So in other words, you put it in water and you put it through a coffee filter. And the cinnamon will stay on the coffee filter. The sugar and the water will pass through because the sugar is dissolved. Physical separation two, allow the solution to evaporate, leaving behind crystals of sugar, sucrose, a pure substance. Okay, so, so far, if I'm just talking about the cinnamon, sugar, and water, is it a mixture or pure substance? It's a mixture. How do you know? Because we separated it into cinnamon, sugar, and water by only using physical separation, like a f -f physical f -f phase change or we used a filter, which is also a physical change. All right, now we're gonna chemically separate. We're gonna take that sugar can be burned to break it down into carbon and water vapor. Chemical separation two, the water that evaporated off is a compound and cannot be separated by physical means. It can, however, be separated into hydrogen and oxygen by electrochemical procedures. Hydrogen and oxygen are elements and cannot be separated further. So once we put the mixture into its compounds into its pure substances, then we said, okay, we can break it down even farther. Sugar is made of complex changes of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Burning is a chemical process that breaks down sugar into carbon and water vapor. Elements can be represented by chemical symbols. And remember, where do you find the elements? On the periodic table. Did you notice when talking about elements and compounds, the name of the element or compound is followed by one or more letters? These letters are symbols for elements. Many early chemists used symbols to represent elements. Later, these symbols became standardized into one or two letters. Symbols for elements can be found on any periodic table. So this is what they used to use, and this is how we do it now. And we'll talk more about what everything means. 
and we'll go to the next video.